Hey, it's John Good from DW. Many of you have been in this office via video before, but uh, I'd like to invite you in here to talk about the things that we hatch in this place. For example, you know, I was doing the whole Romanian River Oak project and I really fell in love with the whole idea of doing oak. Why don't we do collector's red oak? And that's something that really started right in here. So I want you to follow me and we'll go through the whole process out there in the factory. From here, you know, it's kind of a little perk at DW. I get to uh, have my own secret little entrance right here. This is my uh, escaper out right here into the factory. It's a lot of fun. But in Michigan, that's where we really start. So when we were, last time I was there, I remember talking to Don Sadler and the people at Timber Products. And they invited me out into the forest and we really witnessed some really cool uh, events of them. They were on a job site. I had the hard hat on and boots, the whole nine yards. We went out and we were um, in the forest while they were cutting. And they have this great machine that, that cuts you know, like it grabs the tree and cuts it and, and it doesn't just let it fall, it guides it down into the proper clear spot so it doesn't damage other trees. Then it cuts it into sections, they pick it up and they load it on a big huge Kenworth truck, you know, and the truck has to be loaded just right because you got 150,000 pounds of logs going down the highway, you better load it just right. So it's kind of done like a puzzle, right? And then when they get there, they offload it and they debark it. They put it like up on the lathe. They rotary cut it. it winds up into sheets. It has to go through a dryer. There's a whole huge process and they clip it and they palletize it and then they stack it. And everything is so organized there and it's very impressive. And then when it gets to DW, basically it winds up like this over here. This is a uh, 132nd of an inch thick. Normally we deal with what, Sean, a 136. So we cut this a little bit thicker and Baruch is gonna be uh, clipping with Sean to start this whole process of making a drum shell. We wanted it to be a little bit thicker so we'd have to have less plies. So we got really more wood and less plies. So it's kind of a interesting concept, but I think when you see the final product, you're gonna be really surprised. So guys, let's, let's go ahead and take this on in there. We're clipping it in to you know sizes that are just right to make plywood because before you make a drum shell, you have to make plywood. So here it gets clipped right here. The next basic step, Sean and Zig, you're making some plywood, oak plywood. Every ply is oak. For example, we're putting long grain and short grain together and then short grain over the top, that turns it into a core. These are HVLT shells. That's a horizontal and they wind up with a vertical inner. And there's no reinforcing hoops in these drums. So, for example, the, the, the rack toms 8 through 13 are 7 ply. The floor toms are 8 ply. The bass drums are 8 ply. And the snare drum is an 11 ply rocket that I think you're really going to like when you finally get to hear it. Here's where we make the plywood, putting it into the press. The press is, is about 200 degrees, and he's gonna press that to uh, 3,100 pounds, and it'll be there for about three minutes, and when it pops out, it's plywood. So, that's the machine right there. Follow me. Once we've made the plywood, for example, you know, here's plywood right here, right? We have to cut it to uh, a certain width, and then when, the, when we cut it to length, we've got to use it right away. So I want to show you how we cut it to length. We have very specific sizes. We try and keep this room as moist as we can, because when you cut it, you've got to use it right away. So go ahead and give us a cut. These machines really don't exist. We have to build these things to get what we want out of this. 
So after it's cut it to length, Mario's going to take it out of there and we're going to put it right into a shell right away. So let's, here's our glue roller. Jose's going to put this down. That's a long grain there and a short grain on the back. You're going to miss it down a little bit. Yeah, missed it down a little bit. Hey, it's dry here in Southern California. And I mean dry. So we really kind of got to get the wood to relax a little bit. So he's going to actually put a little bit of a little bit of glue on the end so that the ends are covered for gluing together. So he just touches it into the glue. He's going to lay it down on the table. So that that's the outer of the shell. We got a three ply core, short, long, and then short again. That goes through the glue, glue spreader. Now, so he gets an even spread of glue on both sides, just like that. And now he's gonna lay it down here and stagger where the seams would go. So when it all comes together, you have a much stronger shell, so you don't have it all at one place. So this is the inner, right? Yeah. So this is a short, long, short again. So we finish off with a short grain or vertical grain on the inside of the shell. Hence, you have the horizontal outer and it winds up to be vertical, that's HVLT. So once he's got that, this is a 14 inch shell, right? Yeah. Jose's gonna go put it into the drum heater. Now he's putting it down in here, carefully making sure it's flat down in there. He's going to close the outer platen first and then he's gonna bring down the center which will expose, will apply the pressure, by the way, and that'll stay in there for about six, seven minutes at 2,600 pounds. 2,600 pounds at 200 degrees, and it's really pull, applying pressure to it, right? After that period of time, we take the hot shell out and put it into the cold press. So we have the hot and the cold, because when the shell is cooling down, we don't want it to be able to move anywhere. So this is a cold press, that is at 2,600 pounds and it's in there for about what, four minutes, four or five yeah. minutes? Same amount of about time. The, about the same, yeah. right? So we pop this out. We call this process cool tempering. It's cool tempered shells. We have a patent on that that I'm very proud of. So let's have a look at this shell. Great, thank you. So this is cold and man, is it hard. It's really, really nice hard. We've got a new glue that we're using that I'm very proud of. We did a whole lot of research on that. It makes things about 20 times harder. The harder the shell, the more resonant the shell. So now let's take this and walk over to where it's going to be processed from here. The world's first 23-inch bass drum machine, huh? How about that? Those are the machines that we use that'll, that'll pull the glue off the outer of the shell, off of a brand new shell. That's the outer sander. Then we have the inner sander as well. That's very important to skim the glue off the inside. But the real important part is starting off just right. We have this cutting machine here that you put the shell on right here, it turns and these blades come in and cut a perfectly parallel shell. Don't want to start off like that or like this or like that. It's got to be parallel. So once you start with all that, that's, and, you, and you know you're, you're parallel, you've got a good chance that all the way through the process, everything's gonna work out to be flat and on a good plane. After we've sanded with the automatic machine, we really want to sand the shell by hand. So Armando here is putting like the finesse on the shell. He's taking away any little low spots or high spots or tiny glue spots. So he's really finessing the shell right here. We're gonna go to the next process. This is where they're sealing. So that's what all they do in here is seal the drum shells, okay? Polyester sealing. Then we come back here and we sand it on this automatic machine. So he's just 
letting it travel back and forth, nice and even, nice and slow. And we're taking down that, that sealer so it's nice and flat. That's very, very important it's gotta be flat. So from here, that shell is then going back over here. We wanna take that from an automatic machine and finesse it by hand. That's a process that's very, very important. It takes a lot of skill. So you take that flat surface, it's, well, it's actually in a cylinder, but you keep it flat, but you finesse any little tiny imperfections. Try and do the very best we can. So that's the process he's doing right here. So he'll take it and grind it out, just like that, both sides. The next thing he's gonna do is cut the bearing edge. So now he's finessed that inside just to get a little bit more, so it's very, very accurate. Once he's cut that, then he'll cut the out outer edge. That's the rollover from the outside. So now he's got both sides really trued up for the inner cut. That's a 45 degree cut on Tom Tom, a 60 degree inside on snares and bass drum. Now he'll put the roll over the outer edge afterwards. So while he's cutting this edge, I want to go down here. This is a snare drum. You got the outer you're doing? Let's do the outer. Getting that edge right is so important. Okay, and we also check every single one <coughs> right here on granite. He wants to make sure there's no light, right? No light. That's a perfect edge, pal. Thank you very much. So, you check it. Actually, in three places in the factory on granite slabs. So let's go put the snare bit in this now. Francisco is going to put in the snare bed. It's very important to have a snare bed put in this right. Yes, right. Done just right. We used to do it all by hand, but that's very labor intensive and it depends on the mood of the operator. So we built a machine that cuts an excellent edge. It's a six and a quarter edge. And what he'll do is put this in there, locate it, and then we'll, we'll, sh we'll show you how the bed goes in. A lot of people cut a bed, when you got an, the angle coming around, they just flatten it out at the snare bed. What we like to do is follow the profile of the bearing edge all the way through and in and out of the snare bed. So, we're ready to go. Francisco, would you pull the tape off real quick? So we'll have a quick look at how everything's shaped up here. This is the surface you get on the inside. That roller we put the drum on to keep it rolling. And the, this is the only drum that we put the lacquer on the inside. So I was at the Santa Monica Pier once buying a hot dog and I saw this little roller rolling the hot dogs, and I thought, that's a good way to stop the lacquer from dripping or running anywhere, because the snare drums are the only drums that we put lacquer on the inside. So, we've just cut a, a snare bed in this, and I want to show it to you on this rock. This is the second place where we check the edges. Top edge first. You notice that? There's no light. That's a good edge. And what we just did here, you notice, that's a six and a quarter length snare bed 
180 degrees across from each other. And we've also followed the shape of the bearing edge through the bed. Very, very important to make that bottom head very, very tunable. Okay, so from this point, I wanna show you a machine that actually drills all the holes. Come with me, please. Here we've got Eric, who's um, the operator for this machinery. This is a CNC machine. And what he's doing is he tightens up the shell with this pedestal right here. Can you show how that pedestal uh, tightens and stops? I want you to see this. See how it holds the shell? Excellent. Now, all of this machinery here doesn't know anything about this shell until we scan it. We put the scanner right here on the barcode on the paperwork. And once he does that, then the machine knows everything about it. So Ryan, come over here. Once he scans that paperwork, now this machine knows exactly what it wants to do and what size it is. It verifies the size there. And now we're gonna go down and drill four holes. That's for the DW Badger. <coughs> So it's drilled the four holes. Now it's gonna change tools and go to the process of drilling all the lug mounting screw holes. And this is a very precise machine. It knows exactly, it's been programmed to put it in the exact places where it needs to be. It's super, super accurate. So while this is doing that, and by the way, at the end of the process, this computer has the ability to like email the update of where this has been. So that's kind of a cool feature too. I want to show you from here where we go to uh, put the hard satin finish on. I want you to be able to see this. We're going to open the door. This is best store. He's spraying the hard satin finish. like the hard satin finish on the oak. Sure, it's available in a gloss finish if you like. Beautiful job, Pastor. Thank you very much, my friend. Now follow me, I wanna show you another, the next process. By the way, we're in the land of Louis Garcia right over there. That's where he does all of his graphics and such. Do you remember when we were talking about that inside finish on the, um, on the snare drum we, we saw out there? We've got to go in here and see how they do that. Come on in. It's going to go. Here you can see when we spray the lacquer on the inside of the shell, we don't want it to run. So we spray it and we put it on here so it keeps turning it so it has nowhere to, to drip lacquer anywhere. So that provides like a glass finish when it's done. There's some real pretty drums that Beto is spraying right now, huh? Another one of my favorites. Okay. Now we've checked the edges in two places. This is the third place where we check edges right here. Hi, how are you doing? Good. So this is the, has this been cleaned up? This is where we inspect and clean everything up right here. And they check it, the edges on, on the rock again. It's very, very important. You can't check enough times. So this is the spot where we really wanna make sure everything has worked from where we were there. Now, prior to getting to this spot, we will have timbre matched the drums. That means checking the intervallic relationship between each shell size. Doom, 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 right? And once we've done that and the drum set stays together as a family, when it gets to this point, we insert the note. So here we are. We actually have an analyzer here because I've picked the shells by ear and then we will check it right here.
this will read the note for us. And once we've done that, thank you, dear, we will then plug that into the computer. This is Collector's Oak HVLT. It gives you the, the order number. It gives you the timbre note. And what we do is we put this on the inside of the shell. That is That note that we've selected is really basically a guideline to tune the bottom head. Tune the bottom head to that note. You're working with the shell. Then depending on how much energy you put into the drum, you go a half step, a whole step further to make that pitch bend and fall in the shell. So this is very important information. It goes on the inside of each collector series shell. Everything is inspected. The first place of inspection. We're going to take it to final assembly. Gigi's assembling this drum. This gets to what, chrome hardware? Yes. And uh, every bit of this drum is inspected all along the way. She's putting on the, the new True Pitch 50, which is 50 threads per inch that we started back in January. I'm very proud of that whole system. It allows you to tune so incredibly accurate and also keeps the drum in tune longer because you're engaging 50 threads. Plus, we're putting on the, the true hoop that we've come up with. I spent a long time developing this counter hoop, and we're really proud of how they feel, how they tune, how they hold the drums really in tune longer. So that's the whole assembly process. The drum isn't done being you know, through the assembly process until it gets tuned. So Roland, how you doing, Roland? Is tuning each drum. And if you notice here, we got a kind of a cool way to get it up to the right level so you don't hurt your back. You know, when you're in an automobile factory, the last thing they do is stick a key in it and turn it on, right? So that's sort of what we do here. We, we, we tune it and then hit it to make sure it's doing everything we wanted it to do. We're putting, we're applying our new drum heads, which are the double A smooth finish that we're very proud of. Scott Donnell and I developed this head. We also offer it in a coated version as well. But it's coming stock with these oak drums. We feel that it enhances the bottom end quite nicely. And those heads are almost indestructible. So once it's just tuned, thank you, Rowan. And we come from here into what we call the White House. And Elena is the president of the White House. It's about time we had a lady president, don't you think? And she inspects the final, final inspection under all these hot white lights. It's very important that you're able to see every little detail. Yes, we're just human beings, and some people make mistakes, but we try to mitigate any of those mistakes right here in this room. A factory can be a dark place, you know, with very poor lighting, so we've lit this up best we can to keep it going. Also, one interesting fact about what we're gonna put on here as a, as a hang tag is that we plant a tree for every drum set you buy. So I think we're up to in the area of about 33,000 trees. And it's like, um, you know, they grow all over the United States, Indian reservations, you know, north, south, east, and west, and we're very proud of it. So this is a tag that will come here, and we encourage you to read this because it's, we're partnered up with American Forest, and they're a very, very good partner for a very worthy cause. So at this point, she will line up all the drums, once the drums are all lined up and we, we, we can see that they all match, that everything is you know, what we expected it to be, then she will give it the thumbs up. She'll photograph the drum kits for archival purposes. And when it goes from here, it'll go into packaging. Packaging is very important, of course, to get it all the way across the country or across the world. But before we package up this drum set, why don't we give a listen to them? 